today I want to share with you something and I would like you all to do something for your own sake. I had the opportunity over the past few years to interact with people of different kinds, various groups, and I engaged with them as a mentor, coach, educator. Let me take you through and introduce you to three such groups. The first group is over 100 women working in rural India for a cooperative bank and a foundation that serves the communities in the villages of Maharashtra. The second group, over 20 managers, European and Asian managers, working for an international organization based out of Netherlands. Now introducing you to the third group, over 50 MBA students, postgraduate management students studying in Mumbai. As a part of our exercise to connect with oneself, we ask several questions. And one question that we ask is, go back as early as in your childhood memory, and what did you dream to be? So these are three different groups, ask the same question. Of course, as you can expect, various responses. However, the number one response across these three groups was the same. I wanted to be a teacher. I'm not here to discuss the statistical relevance of the sample size or the methodology adopted. I was intrigued as to why. Why is it that this three diverse group, which on the face of it, there's nothing in common. You know, we're talking about their demographic, economic, psychographic profiles, there's nothing in common. But still, each of these group chose to be a teacher as their earliest childhood memory when asked that question, what do you want to be? So why? I found something beautiful in that response. I found something so beautiful in that response of their early childhood memory that I would like to share my own childhood memory. In 1983, as a 12-year-old, I was asked by my father to help a newly migrant family from Kerala who have come to Mumbai. Their seven-year-old son was told by the school, a local English medium school, that he won't be promoted from the second grade to the third grade if he continues to perform the way he did in his first semester. His parents did not speak or understand English. So this unusual request from my father was not unusual for me, because he was known to be someone who goes out of his way to help others. So I obliged. And over the next two months, I spent one hour each every day after my school tutoring the child at his home. At the end of the two months, when the final results came, the child performed very well, beyond anyone's expectation. I still remember the day when I went to their home on the day of the final results to be welcomed by this child who was smiling and with joy and pride showing off his results, while a teary-eyed father gave 20 rupees and took it, put it in my hand, in my open palm. It was a very awkward and embarrassing moment for me. I didn't know how to react or respond to that. Remember, I was just a 12-year-old. But I realized that that was the only way this father could show his appreciation to me. That day, as I walked back home, I felt something. There was a moment. Back then, I could not put a word to it. I did not introspect or analyze it. But I felt light. I felt elevated. I felt fulfilled. Why did I feel that? 
to this day, I can recollect that day, and I can sense what I felt. Why did I feel that? I realized, what did I do? I just gave what I already have. I just gave a few hours of my time, and I got so much more than what I gave. It's not the profession of teaching or the designation of the teacher. It is the impact or the influence that the teacher made to the child. It is what the giver, in this case the teacher, gives to the child, and the child, the receiver, looks upon the teacher, the giver, and wants to be the giver. Now, you must be wondering, why am I saying all of this, and what is the context? I'll come to that in a minute. Remember, I said that I want all of you to do something for your own sake. Let me shift gears a little bit. In 2018, there was a report that came out from the World Health Organization, conducted by the National Care for Medical Health. And we were, India got that sad distinction of being the most depressed nation in the world. The same year, 2018, the Associated Chamber of Commerce and Industry, an apex body in India, also came up with a report saying that 50% of employees in the industry are depressed, which means one out of two is depressed. It was 42.5% to be exact, but let's not split human bodies into 42.5 and 57.5. So what does it mean? It means that at your place of work, at your office, half of them are feeling depressed. Now, who are they? Can you spot them? Can you identify them? Are they hiding something? I have met hundreds of corporate managers, business leaders, business owners, professionals, who are very good at what they do, and who get paid well for what they are good at. But as they perform their nine to five, or in most cases, nine to nine routine, there must be something. There are so many things in their thoughts, in their mind. But do they see that? Do they see the elephant in the mind? The elephant in the mind is so heavy and weighs you down, it seeks attention. While you're feeding it products and services, while you're feeding it experiences, vacations, meditation, yogas, Zumba. But as we saw, that for 50% of you, still the elephant in the, way, in the mind is weighing you down. Why? It is asking for your attention. Except for a courageous few, many of you refuse to acknowledge the presence of the elephant in the mind until it shows up as fatigue, stress, depression, divorce, resignations, sabbaticals. It seeks more than what you're feeding it. It seeks meaning, it seeks purpose, it seeks fulfillment. Dr. Otto Sharmer, an MIT professor, famously said that how as humans, we want to and we should be moving away from the ego system to the ecosystem. We ask the question, what is it that I give to the ecosystem? I cannot see my contribution. I cannot see the impact. I cannot feel the fulfillment. So what is the solution here? What is the solution? to address this elephant in the room. We spoke about it. Be a teacher. You get more than what you give. Now the question is, how? Remember, as a child, you visualized it, and some of you even dreamt of it, to be a teacher. 
So it's time for you to unleash the teacher in you. There's nothing more meaningful or purpose-driven than to be a teacher. But all of this is fine, but how? Does it mean that all of you should start applying for teacher jobs or start looking for schools or classrooms or students? No, that is not what I am trying to say. Look around you. There is the maid, there's your neighbor, there's your laundry man, the security guard, the neighbor's child. It could be anybody. It could be the simple person who's selling something on the street and his son is also there. They need and they will gain from your time, your experience, your knowledge, your insights, your attention. You can give them 15 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour per day, per week, per month. You can coach them, teach them, train them, skill them, equip them, guide them to be a better version of themselves. And in doing so, you will find the meaning, the purpose that you're looking for. The meaning, the purpose that Simon Sinek so famously asked everyone to ask the why in the golden circle. Or that Otto Sharma asked about mindfulness in the theory you. Or what the Japanese philosophy asks, the reason for being in the Ikigai principle. Or what the Buddhist philosophy talks about enlightenment in Nirvana. The magic of all of this in just one action. In 2011, I was among the top 1% earners in the United Kingdom with one corporate job. Today, I earn less than one-fourth of that and I do four jobs. But I've never been more fulfilled and purpose-driven than in my entire corporate life. Because each of these four jobs gives me an opportunity to coach, train, mentor, guide, skill, equip people. I get so much more than what I give. You can also do so. Look around you. There is someone waiting to be coached, to be taught, to be mentored, and to become a better version of themselves. So for their sake, and also for your own sake, teach. Thank you.